Good afternoon folks. Yes, I, I know well, you'll know that I managed to win this MO3 to my MO3 in a raffle recently. At um I basically just want to show you what all I've done to it. Because as you can see the, the front of the, the shell, although I've taped it up and make it look a bit more presentable, has really reached the end of its useful. Um, I had a couple of things I needed to do to the chassis. Oh, these blooming body pins. I think I'll probably need to get bigger ones. So, we're off to my MO3 chassis. As you can see, I've got foam discs for supporting the body shell. I now have a 1060 ESC and a Gull RC TG3 receiver. Those of you who are familiar with the MO3 chassis will know that there are usually plenty of slots in the back of the chassis where the old mechanical speed controller sat. I have taped them up to try and keep as much dirt and water out the back as possible. I have added 15 grams of lead weight in the back. Well, not lead nowadays, but you know what I mean. Still the silver can motor. I bought new rear axles because this one was quite badly bent. So that came in yesterday along with these medium grip radials. I need to try and I need to try and hunt down some oil shocks for these. They're really they really are very stiff even though they're just supposedly calling over springs. Keeping this over can motor in um Basically, because it's, it's fast enough. I can't really, you can't really drive this one-handed. It's just, it's too quick. Um, what I have had to do, the, let's see if I can zoom right in. Just there, this bar coming across here. As you can see, it actually cracked there. Oh, camera's going out of focus. Need to wait till it resets itself. <coughs> so, it's been glued and wrapped a zip tie round to keep it taut. Stops, stops it moving around. Nothing else mechanically has been done to this. I have no real intentions of doing any modifications. It's very difficult to get MO3 parts, as I am finding out, much to my chagrin. But uh, this little body shell uh, basically has been retired. Um, However it was I originally had it, um, yeah, didn't, made a bit of a mess of cutting out the rear. Still, that has been replaced. And I ordered up a Fat Bodies Mini Cooper shell, which I have painted up. 
cut out. I was going to take this out for a, a little blast about, but when I went round to the shops there it started raining. So that kind of has put a kai ah, put a kibosh on that. Oh bloody body pins. Alright, it would be easier if I took it off the turntable and then put the body pins in. Far better chance of doing it when it's not trying to spin around on me. Just bear with me a minute. I get these pins in. I should really get bigger body pins than this, but. If you put bigger body pins on, it really, whoa, really would look out of place. Right, uh, here is what I have managed to put together. Got the fat bodies. Cooper shell. Done the best I could to keep the paint scheme reasonably simple and most of it to be done with oh, decals. A lot of decals actually come with the fat body shell. You get the the coopers, you get the light, you get the grills, indicators, mini sports, you get the sunstrip plates, the fat body's logo, I just kept put the small one on, I don't want to put the big one on, and that's from an old Tamaya kit as well. The rest of the stickers I picked up a while ago. The TTF models is who I got the rear axles from. So that is how my MO3 Mini now looks. Now, what I have done, I had to do a slight modification to the shell. Well, it's not really to the shell in a way. Now, down here, this is double sided foam strips. There's about six, six or seven layers there. And that's just enough to pad the front of the body out so that when you're on full lock, the wheels do not touch the shell. Uh, you can see there, if I zoom in a bit, you can see where the tyres have actually ripped the paint off the inside. Fortunately not right through. So quite happy that that's been done. It's amazing the, the difference a brand new set of tyres is over the old ones. I could do with, oops, where are we? I could do with replacing this rear axle as well. Well, it looks a bit, it looks like it's got a kink in it. And that's it. This is the one that was really bad. So it's running a lot better now. Probably there's a slight buckle in that axle. But the front wheels, front wheels are fine, there's no wobble in there. It's 
really quite a tidy little piece of kit. I'm really pleased with it. Um, as you saw in the last video, it's it's surprisingly quick. And I was only operating on 75% uh, throttle. But even then, I, I could not get up to... I couldn't peg the, peg the throttle. It was just too quick. Yeah. And that is all for today. I just thought I would show you what I've done with my MO3. Whether I'll ever be able to go out and race, I do not know. Um, yes, I am still waiting for my vinyl numbers to come through. I hope they do me here today, but they'll probably turn up tomorrow. And then I can get some race numbers put on there. That's all for today folks, please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I would really appreciate subscriptions because my numbers are extremely low even though I've been doing this for, um, let me think, 15 years. And my subscribers are... What, what am I on? 365 I think it is. But I would really appreciate some new subscribers and hopefully get my numbers up a bit and kick the algorithm up. Anyway, that's all for today folks. Please take care out there. Hope you have yourselves a great weekend and I shall catch you again on the next video. Bye for now.